fellow guests, you're listening to Catalyst Talks, conversations with change agents, outliers, superheroes, and truly conscious leaders modeling what it is to be an unstoppable force for good in this world. What lit these catalysts on fire to do their work and what nuggets of wisdom can they share with a world literally on fire? This podcast is for you who cares deeply and seeks to catalyze the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Traeger. I'm a catalyst coach to superstar change agents in business leadership and life, founder of Intentional Paradigms and also Traeger Law, the conscious contracts firm, helping thought leaders scale and protect their creative genius. The whole idea of Catalyst Talks and these conversations is to understand how these leaders have approached being on the leading edge of their craft, how did they uncover their purpose, and what does it really take to catalyze change and at scale. Please subscribe to our podcast and help us grow. We're aiming to reach a million people at least in 2020. Let's wake up the world together. Today we're talking to Dr. Gregory D'Amato, a passionate spiritual warrior who is an incredible raw food, vegan food herbalist. He's This man is just so amazing. I had the opportunity to spend some time with him in Costa Rica recently and wanted to bring him on this show to share some wisdom with you all through the interconnection of several disciplines such as quantum physics, psychology, neuroscience, life purpose, herbalism, and theogenic and orthomolecular medicine. Dr. D'Amato pulls together several pieces of the overall puzzle to allow us a to understand a deep sense of wholeness. And we're going to learn that in this conversation today. So thank you for joining us on Catalyst Talks. The natural state of Gaia and all of her inhabitants is that of symbiogenesis and homeodynamics, a state of consummate emergent balance. What we introduce to the environment is echoed in ourselves. Hello, Dr. Greg. Hello, hello. You wrote this recently, and I would love for you to elaborate. Yeah, so it's just sort of a download that we're just part, you know, humans are basically just part of this sort of web of Gaia, you know, this whole system of Gaia theory of basically looking at, you know, how we're, we're sort of all, we're all one, you know, is basically what it comes down to. So anytime we introduce something to the system, we all you know, sort of pay the price, you know, karmically good and bad. You know, for instance, we, we sort of are absorbing five grams of plastic every day now, sorry, every week, you know, in the average person in, in the form of microplastics. So every time we throw something out into this web of Gaia, we basically come back to consume it, whether it's, you know, a chemical, a pesticide, an herbicide, or love, or beauty, or goodness, or kindness. So Gaia is sort of reflecting as this evolutionary Mary, everything that we're sort of putting out to her. So it's basically just to bring people's awareness more to whatever we're putting out, we're getting back. As small a quantity as it is, it's basically what's happening. So that's the design of everything. You know, any, any knowledge that we put out is already there in the collective consciousness. Any intention we put out is, is amazing. You know, bacteria is, is 3.8 billion years old, the most advanced form of life on this planet, because they've learned to get along with everyone, with viruses, with pathogens, with amoeba, with all these different things, you know. So we're trying to catch up to them. Can we sort of get along with each other? Can we understand this? You know, and these guys are so smart. They, they already know the 12 different drugs we're introducing to combat, you know, bacteria, the, new, the 12 new antibiotics that are coming out. They're already resistant to them. Tell so me about already, that. Tell us about that, though. How, how? Yeah, tell us about that. So it's it's just understanding that the present state that we're in now isn't really present. You know, so if you look at the secret life of plants, what they know is that the plants are pretty much reading our mind. The plants are just like us. You know, they're sort of a f- upside down version of a human. They're sort of flipped down um, in the ground, and that's all the root systems. The brain is all the the neural nets are all through the the root systems. They connect with each other plant and they have this sort of neural network going through the root systems and through the mycelium, which is the internet. And they're just, they're, they're rocking out, you know, they're connecting everything with ancient wisdom and knowledge. And if a tree starts to die, they'll start to pump life force through the the root system through these trees. They make friends with the trees. They'll start to send bacteria, you know, the, the mama, big, big trees, the canopies will start to, see a problem with their babies down below the baby trees and they'll see a certain mite on it or an insect and they'll send the exact uh, pheromone energetically through to the the baby 
And that baby will then use that pheromone to bring the exact um, insect or bird that eats that insect that's eating their leaf. So it's this whole sort of string of coalescence of symbiogenesis, and that's what we're living in. So it's, it sort of begs the question, like, well, what are we doing today to, to help that? You know, what are we doing today to, to ferment that into the consciousness of humanity? Because everything that we're doing inside of us isn't inside of us. It's actually instantly external to the collective consciousness. So we're looking at the hundredth monkey syndrome of as soon as the hundredth monkey knows everything, poof, the whole world sort of changes. And we need less than 5% of the world to sort of get this download of information that we're all pretty much on the exact same you know, planet doing the exact same stuff, being affected by every single person, place, or thing. Whether you're switching on a light in the room, the water's affected, the plants are affected. Whether you're thinking love to the plants, they're affected. Giving love to your food that goes back into you. You know, imprinting is everything. So as we're picking a, you know, a fruit, that's imprinted the intention of the person as a light frequency. So then we eat that fruit. So who's picking our fruit? Who's planting our fruit? Who's growing our fruit? What's the intention behind that? You know, the encoding of the seeds is another amazing sort of ancient Vedic technique where you take a seed, you put it under your mouth for nine seconds or into your tongue, and you basically let it sit there. At the end of the nine minutes, you then hold it in your hand and give it love for 30 seconds. Whether it's a broccoli seed, a kale seed, an apple seed, whatever it is, that plant or tree will grow exactly what you need. Whether you need more selenium, more potassium, more zinc, more phosphorus, whatever you actually need, that tree or plant will grow the inversion for you to provide that for you. And then once a year, you throw some water, put your, soak your feet in some water, throw that in your garden. Those new plants will connect to everybody else and tell them what you need via the new encoding of the water system from your feet. So it's all these old ancient sort of systems that we did where we actually knew that we are connected with everything. What they've done now is they've sort of made the humans believe that we're this static, you know, sort of earth where it's very dynamic. Everything that we do is changing that earth and responding back to us from the bacteria, from the pesticides, from the chemicals. You know, if we're introducing carcinogenic substances into the environment, guess who now has cancer? You know, 60 to 80% rate of cancer in the Western world for, you know, humans kind of thing. Where is that coming from? Exactly what we put into it. So yeah, it's just coming to a big collective conscious and understanding that whatever we put out there is coming right back whether it's good, bad, ugly, beautiful, or loving. You know, it's our, it's our really, really awesome choice that we have every second of every day. Mm, taking all that in. And what, so what you were talking about the, the seed, you know, taking the seed, putting it under your tongue, and then sticking your feet in water, throwing it on your plants, and that the plant has this intelligence and it knows. So I would love to know more about your, like when you started studying that, when did you wake up to that? When did you realize, right? Because it's this, this process of dot connecting. And right now we're in, this, we're in this collective environment where sustainability is now a thing. We have the circular economy is now a thing. Like there's, there's a lot of things that weren't things a little while ago, yeah. right? And so, but this, this, this wisdom is, is ancient and there's, there's a lot of it kind of feeding into this kind of the corporate culture that's trying to figure out sustainability. And then there's a lot of pieces, this consciousness piece that's, that, that's missing. So for you, when, where do you see, where do you see that, that dot connect happening? You talked about the hundred so sort of, monkeys. Yeah. Sort of like for my awakening, it came, um, you know, we were pregnant with our first son, me and my wife, we sort of said, well, what do we now need to do to raise a child? You know, because previously it was like, okay, just do whatever we do, you know, do what your dad did or do whatever sport he did or just keep doing what your brothers and sisters do. So now we are sort of on our own saying, okay, what do we actually now need to do? You know, um, let's look to the, the issue of vaccination. Let's look for, you know, the schooling issue. There's a lot of issues of circumcision, of all these different things of diet, you know, what does my wife need to eat for nutrition? So that was sort of our big awakening of looking into, you know, different things outside the norm that we've been taught. You know, from that, I sort of unraveled this huge rabbit hole that went down, 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 some ugly, some beautiful, you know, and that's what sort of happens in the awakening. And you realize the planet needs us now more than ever. So we have to start changing. So we started changing. So we went vegetarian, we went all organic, we eventually went vegan, high raw food. We looked into the, the medicinal components of food, 
um, as medicine, looked at Hippocrates, all the ancient sort of wizards out there that have long been forgotten. Because for me, it was sort of saying, well, why are we so sick? Why are we so sick individually, you know, in families and neighborhoods and as a community? Why are we so sick? And why does no one really look to these deep underlying causes, you know? And a lot of it is nutrition. It's the food that you put in the mouth has a big impact on it. You know, that's going to be the medicine or the poison. So now most of us are eating poison. So we have to really get back to the, the live, super rich food to become these, you know, active superheroes that we were born into. So yeah, the big awakening was definitely, you know, having to ask the deep questions that no one really had the answers to because there's so many answers out there, but what are the true answers is what I was sort of looking at. From my background in research, I was like, okay, let's go to the published research. Let's look at the real answers to things and let's start seeing how we feel making these really, really immense changes. And for me, I got rid of all the allergies I had, digestive issues as a kid, you know, blood sugar things, all these things that were just normal that you just take a pill for, you have seasonal allergies, all the crap we were sort of told. I was like, hmm, that's not really true. So from that, I started asking more and more questions saying, well, what is the potential for human consciousness? What is the potential for human physical vitality? How long can we actually live in a, in a vital state? What are the ancient you know, forms of medicine? What's the Ayurvedic medicine? What is the Egyptian medicine? What's the Brazilian medicine? And what are the sort of the connecting dots between all of these things? And what are we doing as individuals and cultures that are just wrong and that aren't really feeding our soul? You know, so from all of that, just, you know, changing, having a huge biodynamic garden in Australia, I was there um, getting my doctor for, you know, we lived there for about eight years. So we had this huge biodynamic garden. Our kids couldn't even lift the zucchinis. They were so huge. It was ridiculous. So they would encode all the seeds, put them on the little tongues. They'd do all the seedlings, plant everything, harvest everything. Didn't really need to feed them much because they would go in the garden and just raid everything every morning, pull up carrots and kale, and super just high on life, you know? So looking at all that stuff, what do we need for water? How do we restructure water? You know, how do we get the vitality up to 30,000 times the photonic activity of water? You know, what are we made up of? You know, we're made up of 70, 90% water. So another big piece of the puzzle. So yeah, it was just for me researching, like, what do we need to do you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally to get to our state of wholeness, our highest vibrational self. And the foundation for that to me is definitely the food, you know, in a big, big way. So that was your purpose awakening. It sounds like at some point in there, you realize, okay, this is my service to the world. So tell us about your work in the world. Yeah, so from about probably 10 years of research at the time, we started the superhero program. So that was a really important one for us because it was saying, okay, let's put all these different pieces together and start working with people and seeing the effect, you know, because in life, everything from everything we eat, do, think is an experiment. Let's see how well all of this research from all these different areas, from neuroscience, quantum physics, psychology, from live food, nutrition, herbology, from all of these different things, let's really put them together in a super action-packed program in order to get people back to that superhero status. You know, let's get them into really opening their heart center. Let's get rid of all the emotional traumas and the 14 different generations of trauma that's held in our DNA at a minimum. You know, so let's introduce some plant medicine. Let's get to the entheogens, which means the birth of God within. Let's get into some of the psychedelics, which means delios and insight to the mind, right? How do we now get past ourselves? You know, that's a big question for people. How do you get past yourself? I always say to people, evolve beyond you. Like, how do you get past your issues, yourself, your lack of forgiveness, all these types of things? So the superhero program goes deep into that. Like, how do we really evolve beyond us? So our kids don't have to pick up the garbage that we stepped over in our house for years and years and years and cut our feet and cursed every time. How do we now do and clean, you know, everything, our DNA, our mind, our body, our spirits, so we can get back to that superhero. So it's a lot of detox that we do. We do some, um, you know, blood matching. I call it a live blood transfusion where people are drinking coconut water, which is a 55% match of the blood which is the plasma, and then the other 45% is hemoglobin, which is matched with sort of our green juice. So it's a lot of detoxing, fasting, cleansing, and other good stuff um, to just really activate that inner superhero. I have a question about that, you know, coconut, coconut water. This is a good question because that 
there's, there's, there's every time they're there, we find out, or there's a kind of a mainstreaming of information that something is really good for us. And then it becomes more commercialized. Then it becomes out in plastic, plastic bottles or becomes, now it becomes a waste generator. Right. Yep. So what do you say? How do, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? You know, yes, drinking from the coconut is ideal. And yeah, I mean, definitely that's ideal. That was for us on our vision board. We looked to live in Costa Rica. We said, where are the coconuts? You know, that was like number one or two out of probably a hundred things we had, you know? So my wife said, take me to where the coconuts were because we knew through cleansing and fasting, that was one of the best source of electrolytes in the world. So yeah, obviously getting back to source is the best. You know, if you can't, getting to the least processed one, you know, people ask, what is it? I don't even know, you know, because mm -hmm. we just drink it. I've never actually had one that wasn't a fresh coconut. So I have no idea what it even tastes like, but people say, Oh, it tastes fine. I'm like, I'm sure it does. You know, if you don't know any different. So yeah, the, the issue with it all is of course the waste, let's just keep making it convenient, throw it out. There's a thousand years to break down, breaks down into microplastics that rain down on us and all that stuff. So yeah, to me, you can get the, the Thai coconuts are good, which is the whole coconuts. Those last a very long time. Um, and then just the regular cocos, which are like only a tiny bit of water. Those are mainly for making like coconut cream and milk like that. But yeah, come, go to Thailand. People go to Thailand, do some fasting. We send people to Bali. They come to Costa Rica. So get the real thing. Stay for like three weeks or a month and just go nuts on it, you know? You got to be able to get stuff that's like local to you from many different reasons, from the energetic downloads to the viruses and the pathogens that are in your area for the information. All that stuff is actually in the coconut um, in a big way. So getting that like right from source is definitely recommended. And I, I want to, I want you to speak more on that, you know, getting stuff that's local to us. I know that, and this is no, I'm not talking against any herb or plant that is out there because I'm a total herbalist and plant person myself. And I also know that so many people, um, you know, will turn to a plant from Africa or a plant from, you know, a Chinese medicine, so her herbs from Chinese medicine. When we have, like here, I'm in North America, I'm in New York, there's so many plants, there are so many local plant beings here who are like ready to go to work for us, but people are looking to something else, some sexy new trend or something. So speak to that. What are your thoughts on, on the, you just said a little bit about it, but what is, what is going on in the local plant? Yeah, so the plants are really important. What what they've done is told us to plant a nice, you know, nice bed of grass that you can't eat and load it with chemicals. So that's replacing the natural energetic imprint of the medicine. So if you look outside your door and you don't cut your lawn, you'll see the exact medicine growing for you. And that's a really important concept to understand. It's not for your neighbor, it's actually for you. So everything communicates at once. And they know exactly what ailment you have. All the plants will communicate down to the mycelium. They'll ask different questions to the elder trees. They will send down another answer to that. That will then sprout mycelium, bacteria, all these different things. And you'll actually be growing cat's claw or milk thistle or burdock root if you're in North America for liver cleansing. You'll see dandelions everywhere. It's like, how do I get rid of the dandelions? You freaking juice them or you make a decoction from them and drink them every day. Once your liver is clear, the dandelions will disappear guaranteed. So that's a really important concept to understand is we're not just part of this. We're actually working within the symbiotic confounds of Gaia herself, who's always looking out for us. So the plants you're looking for are right under your foot, you know, as you're walking to the doctor to get the next magic pill from a plant extract from, you know, Africa and all this other stuff. So it's really being aware, you know, being super conscious, opening up those gating parameters, sensory gateways that we all have, opening them up and start looking down saying, what is that? That's not just a weed. It's actually one of the best remedies for your kidneys. Here's another one for your liver. Here's one for gallbladder. Here's one to, you know, rebuild the myelin sheath. That's for you as well. That's purslane. This is moringa. This is over here. So it's looking at the reishi growing or all of that or none of it. You know, it's really looking at what's growing for you. So we can look outside ourselves for plants outside of our country or state lines, or wherever they are, but we don't need to, you know, every single place in Africa will have a very similar analog herb that's growing for you. You know, whether you're in India or you're in Brazil, they're, they're going to have a very simil similar biochemical makeup. They're going to have similar alkaloids um, and they're pretty much growing for you. And that's a really important concept to understand. It's just really looking outside and saying, okay, this is everything I have right now. 
get your greenhouse growing, get your seeds encoded, and then it's actually specifically growing for you. Every tomato, every onion, everything you're pulling up is exactly recommended for you. It's responding to the environment. If there's a lot of uh, cesium in there from Fukushima, if you're on North American, you know, West Coast, you're gonna be getting more potassium rich um, nutrients and then more quercetin, you're gonna get more iodine rich nutrients and your purple cabbage because we're having radiational iodine. So it's really important to understand that where you actually are, there's a lot of things happening, different viruses, pathogens, all the antibodies and things are actually in the plants locally for you because everything is connected as one symbiotic web. And if we go outside and look, boop, it's already there. There's your medicine chest. Just don't step on it, you know. <laughs> so speaking, you're speaking to right now, the list, our listeners are a broad spectrum of folks. And some people might be newer to herbal medicine, plant working closely with plants, or even eating naturally and even eating healthy. And so mm-hmm. what do you say? I mean, you know, you are definitely living in place. You you are grounded, you are connected to the seeds and the plants. Uh, what do you say to folks who are just who are not living? There's one thing to come come visit you, come to Costa Rica, get healed, you know, heal yourself, work with the medicines and heal yourself, and then you go back home. And then you can bring certain practices back with you and still you're you're in this environment. You're in the web of radiation and EMFs and gosh knows what, right? So what do you what is your your what do you what do you say to that? So that's a lot of stuff we do with the program. It's saying, okay, here now we're going into EMF rich zone. How do we sort of, you know, start to get rid of that? We use grounding and earthing pads. So we're, we're sleeping grounded. So you're, you're at zero volts. So we teach people, okay, you can live anywhere you want. It's it much be easier to sit in a rainforest and just drink the pure water out of the sky and have all the plants around you. But a lot of people's reality isn't that, which is fine, you know? So it's, it's just saying, okay, what, what is the sort of field that I'm in now? You know, is there a mine over there? How do I not step on it? How do I avoid it? How do I disarm it? So we have to first understand where we're incarnated into and sort of the times that we're in, what's, what's happening, you know? As scary as it may be, we sort of say, okay, what's in our neighborhood? You know, what are the Wi-Fi's? What is this phone doing? What is all that? We have to ask a lot of questions because we're still being affected by it, even if we don't ask the right questions, you know? So we have to start doing that. And then it doesn't get scary. It gets, oh, okay, so I'm gonna sleep grounded. There goes all my EMFs, the 35 Wi-Fi's that I can see right now on my phone are passing right through me out. Hold on, pause, hit, pause, because everyone doesn't know what that means. So what do you mean sleep grounded? So you can sleep with your feet on the ground, which is what the Native Americans used to do. Because anytime we have rubber-soled shoes, we're, we're keeping all these EMFs bouncing around our body. We're not discharging them. So grounding is a whole nother, you know, three-hour talk on it. But basically what it does is it brings our frequency back down to alpha, 7.83 hertz, which is back to full presence. We're also dumping any excess voltage. So anytime we're touching our computer plugged in, we're at about 28 volts. So we're trying to basically get down to zero, which means grounded. We ground all our really expensive appliances, but even the most expensive one, the humans, we say, yeah, it doesn't matter. And all the research says it's the most important thing to human health is getting outside barefoot. But in the wintertime, they say, well, it's too cold. You can get grounding shoes, grounding moccasins, grounding sandals. And then, of course, sleeping grounded means you have a grounding sheet or a grounding pad if you're at an office where it's a little rubber pad that rolls under your feet, put your barefoot feet on it, and it plugs into the third prong outlet to any outlet, and it comes to the tester just to make sure it actually is grounded, and you're good. You plug that in, and you're basically at zero volts. You will be sleeping much deeper. You won't have headaches. You won't have that electrosensitivity, the swollenness. You won't have brain fog. You know, it won't kill your probiotics and hundreds of other things happening from the 2.45 gigahertz, which is mainly the Wi-Fi's and the cell phones. So yeah, we're just, it's coming in and it's coming out. Someone's like, here, take this. You're like, nope, not taking it. Bye. Take it back, take it back, take it back. So we're always just giving it back. We're not holding on to all this crap kind of thing. So yeah, the EMF issue is a big one because we're supposed to be at zero volts. Hmm. So, so when, when you, you send people back into their, their worlds after working with you and you're, you're like, okay, now your first step is to ground. And then, you know, sure, they're, they have a new awareness. But really what I want to get to here is like, you know, because I've been on the holistic, this path for 20 years as well. And, and you know, some people really want to know, but they only want to know so much because they know that you're going to, you know, you're going to have to change a lot 
yeah, to exactly. really implement. And that's where we are, right? That's it's, it's in the individual and as the collective. We're going to have to change a lot if we're really going to deal with some of these big problems individually and also as a collective. And so I love that you marry the, the truth behind it all, which is awakening consciousness. Because as you do that, you, once you, you're there, you can't really go back. Right. Once you start eating a certain way and feel a certain way, how, how we're talking right now is I got to experience your magic and your food and your elixirs Jeez. and your healing medicine. And, um, and, I was, and I'm pretty healthy, but I was drinking coffee and I'm not drinking coffee anymore. <laughs> nice. Right? But you, it's a decision and a choice to really, to really take in this, this medicine, this truth as medicine. So, you know, have you come across people who've been super resistant and, and who are they? What kind of people are really resistant to this information and knowledge? I mean, if, you, if you're coming to Costa Rica, you're not resistant. Right. You know, that's a big thing. You're like, yes, you've passed the filter, just getting a passport, getting on a plate. I can't do that. Oh, that's crazy. You know? So it's a good filter. Once you're here, it's mostly women. You know, women, this super divine intuition. So most of it's women, maybe 10% guys that I have that are like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, a bit feminine guys, because they're like, okay, that sounds cool. So yeah, everyone's at a different level of evolution. And the people that don't aren't into it, I don't say anything to, you know, it's sort of like, if you're ready for it, here you go. If I'm speaking Mandarin, and no one knows anything about Chinese, you're going to waste your time going, bing, chong, 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 you know, so yeah, it's, it's basically the people that are ready for it you know, in a big way. If you're a younger soul and you're, you know, you're going through different hardships and trauma and that, that reality may exist, but it's not in your field. You know, it's literally just a different language. It's a neuro-linguistic programming. It's a sensory, sensory gating parameters that it's outside of our whole consciousness. So, you know, and that's fine as well because everyone's on a different level. So yeah, when people are ready, then they're ready for everything, you know, and they get the chocolate workshops and learning about the medicinal benefits of chocolate and the 5,000 years old, you know, all the stuff that they used for chocolate. I mean, just hundreds of different things. It just opens your, your reality a bit more saying, wow, most of the stuff that we have used to be medicine. It's just been altered and changed a bit more. So it isn't. So how do I get back to that upgrade? You know, just like the coffee, it's like, you can have coffee, that's all right, but you could upgrade it to shaga with latte and reishi and coconut milk and maple syrup and add a, you know, ashwagandha and all your super adaptogens that we need. They're not optional anymore. We need them, you know, with everything that's happening in the world. And then that's how you start your day and you feel completely different. You don't say, you know what, I really miss that coffee. I really miss that downgrade, you know. <laughs> you don't, you know. But when you're ready for the shift, you're ready for it. And you can't go back. So there's an old parable of the man who took a trip around the world coming back for his village and he was and seeing it for the first time. So we have this new eyes that we can't be changed. We can't go back to the old world of, of the way we're seeing things so that we saw things because we've evolved. And that's the entire purpose of this you know, holographic image we call Earth is the evolution of the soul. And that's what we're here to do. We're constantly bettering ourselves. We're constantly changing. We're constantly learning more in a big way. And then everything starts to change. Mm-hmm. Oh, Amen. So there's, there's, you know, I've been on a holistic path. I would say a holistic path because it's really what is it? A lot of, a lot of people are missing kind of the holistic aspect of of living, of life, yeah. for a long, long time. And you know, a lot of things twenty years ago, you know, you were the weirdo. I was the weirdo mm-hmm. in the elevator with the green juice, you know, like that for you. Yeah. <laughs> now it's mainstream, right? There's so much that's mainstreaming. And sometimes this is what I'm, I'm writing a book right now and talk about a whole chapter on this where we're really watering down a lot of stuff, even as the, like, there's like, um, the critical mass of more people wanting information, more people wanting to heal and be, go, get more natural and get, become more grounded. There's still this watering down. Um, and I'm not knocking it because there's a lot of really great things happening, but there's a lot of watering down of, of this wisdom. And there's, it's almost like, well, is that still good? What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Is it still good to kind of have, you know, have it be a little bit altered? You're talking about, well, the chocolate was good once, but now what are we doing to it? Mm. We're, we're right? adultering so many, so many of the medicines. So what are your thoughts about that? You know, we just have to get back to that ancient sort of you know, knowledge and wisdom without the intermediate effects. You know, the cognitive dissonance that comes out. Well, that's good, but I'd have to give away my microwave. Like, we'll give, I, what? So that's that sort of dissonance that people get to when they start to, change when you start to have new information that's dissonating with your previous view you have to change or get rid of that information 
So of course, there's lots of groups out there spitting, you know, specific disinformation, the military industrial construct, pharmaceuticals, all of these guys are spinning things and they have their forefront guys that are controlled opposition. They say, do this, do this, do this. And I can see it right away. These guys are million dollar booksellers, mainstream people, which I won't mention, and they're complete controlled opposition. They've given million dollars of, you know, of everything. Their books are written for them and they're controlling the last 1%. The last road is sort of the problem where it's saying, okay, that's, oh yeah, do this, do that. And it's in doing this and don't do this. That's the big sort of issue. So yeah, we're sort of at an information sort of war of what's really true. And the only reason we got to this point is because our pineal glands were calcified, you know, with mercury, chloride, or chlorine and fluoride, the three big ones. So we don't know the truth, you know, we're sort of missing that, oh, that doesn't make any sense. You know, the truth vector is a pineal gland, which is a big, big, important part of our, you know, mass awakening. Hmm. Well, that's a whole three episodes right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Where do you see the world going? Where do you see this ship going? So yeah, everyone's awakening in a big way, you know, and a lot of it's not even our own responsibility. A lot of it's coming from the photons of the sun that are interacting with our DNA. The photon is a masculine energy, the light and the wisdom. So we're pretty much upgrading all of our DNA very, very quickly. You know, we're going through pole shifts as well, you know, which happens every 780,000 years. So everything is sort of shifting in a big way. We've entered the age of truth, um, December 21st, 2012, the age of Aquarius. So we're also getting so much information about all the lies, all the crap, all the stuff that we sort of push down in the garbage is now bubbling up. We're like, no, there's nowhere to throw it away. <laughs> you know, you got to deal with it all. Um, so yeah, we're in this sort of massive age of truth with everything that we thought was real. We realize now is just corrupted, lied, faked, you know, and on and on it goes. So we have to get back to these ancient traditions of, you know, brain coherence, heart coherence, self love, nurturing ourselves through yoga, fasting, meditation, getting back our time, not funneling it into the matrix or a system that's not giving anything back. It's really working within ourselves to evolve because that's what we're here to do. So the earth is becoming a paradise faster and faster and faster because people are waking up to all these things. They're like, I don't want styrofoam anymore. You know, last week that was fine. Now I just don't feel right, you know? So the same with the plastic and all these things. There's a lot of bans occurring in Vancouver for plastic and styrofoam. January 1st was a big one for a lot of different places. Um, so there's a lot of things changing in a big way. People are saying, okay, I'd like some cannabis. I want some microdose of psilocybin. Those things that were just crazy and odd are actually some of the most medicinal substances on the planet that are encoded in themselves. When your consciousness awakes from the photons of the sun, these things start to produce more and they're here for you as well. So the laws are sort of coming on to all these things in the collective consciousness as well in a fast way. So we're going back to a paradise in a massive way. We just have to facilitate that a bit more and take more collective responsibility for ourselves and each other. You know, look after each other, nurture each other, help each other, be super kind, be super loving, how to evolve to a, you know, a higher state because karma is a big law of the universe. What you put out is exactly what you get back, whether you're throwing a piece of garbage out or you're giving someone love or helping someone or donating to some cause anonymously, not based on ego. I did this, you know, really coming from the heart space, say I'm doing this because I'm doing it. Not so anyone knows at all. You know, so doing all these things and getting back to a state of paradise on the planet is happening really quickly. Um, but people can't resist that. They can't hold on to their old demons or old crap, their old habits or old like urgh, the anchor. So it's like the sea level's rising and that if we don't cut that chain around our foot, it was fine before we could still swim. But now as the sea level starts to rise, that old paradigm isn't actually, you know, relevant anymore, you know, in a big way. So yeah, it's definitely happening quickly. People are waking up and this is where we have to start supporting with action, you know, action steps for people to say, okay, here's how you cleanse. Here's how you do this. Here's the different food and the medicine and all these different things. You know, as a collective community, we have to get the knowledge out to people that are ready for it. Mm. Yes. Yes, sir. So in what you're doing in order to facilitate that, you have a lot of, a few programs that I would love for you to talk about. Um, the superhero program. And also you have a vegan chef program, right? You teach 
Yes, we do the vegan chef training, which is really cool, super unique. Um, that's in the jungles of Costa Rica. We reconstituted old shipping containers and made out these really cool bungalows. And everything is just coconut Caribbean, like how to make real you know, coconut cheese, how to make ferments, how to make probiotic, prebiotic rich foods, how to do everything within the symbiotic confounds of the medicine that's outside. So we do herb walks and raw chocolate and cacao ceremonies and yoga. So it's just a whole learning, but just supported with a complete love and, you know, coherence and understanding of what we actually here to do. You know, it's not just here, take this, it's vegan. No, it's genetically modified corn with chemicals. That's not, be, that doesn't help. That's a French fry with like, ah. So it's really taking things to a whole nother level. You know, it's, it's more of the, you know, the, the potential consciousness of food and that we're pretty much an extension of what we put in our bodies. It becomes our mind, our body, our spirit, part of our soul forever, every bite we take. So that's a bit, you know, a bit important. So how do we now do that to the highest degree with, you know, super elixirs and shots and smoothies and, you know, how do we feed ourselves? We, we've given everything away to the system. So it's a really cool, you know, week long course of how do we really sustain ourselves and detox with the food as the medicine, you know? Mm. Amazing. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really, I'm really passionate about this, this kind of awakening. I'm in my world. I'm, I'm around people who might not always be in the V, even the vegan state, or if they're vegan, it's like, Hey, I went vegan. And, you know, it, it's like you said, it's still, there's this journey to the real core, the real truth, the real, um, the real wisdom of what that really means and not just a package that says vegan. And so, in in that sense, like sometimes it can be really frustrating for me to to you know I just walk my way and live my way and eat my way and teach as as much for whoever wants to learn, but um, there's a resistance. I still so my heart is just opening up an intention. I'm saying this because I'm really opening an intention that people who are who might be listening, it is a journey for a lot of people. It's really hard. It goes against everything, right? That means oh your entire social life has to change. Every every construct that you consider as your social life or your being, you know, your identity, because is wrapped around all these things. And so it is it, it changing is not just I'm going to change my diet, right? For a lot of people, it means so much. And so. Um, you know, I just want to invite everybody who might be listening and, and, you know, Dr. Greg here just spewed massive wisdom and you can listen to this 12, 20 times, 50 times and pull out so many nuggets of wisdom. But there really is, it's just a curiosity. It starts with a curiosity and like, and, and questioning, looking at your ingredients and starting to really question. And then one day you get it. One day it just clicks and you're like, oh, oh, if I just eliminate food with all chemicals, that just eliminates a whole class of the situation, right? That that makes it really easy. And if I, yeah. you know, when people are starting to eliminate, you know, I'm plant based now. Well, what does that even mean? I'm plant based. That's another phraseology thing that that means so many different things, right? Yeah, big time. So it's just starting slow, you know. It's it's starting slow, and there's just there's degrees to it, you know. If you're learning a different language, you, you're not going to going to be fluent in Mandarin the first day, you know, it's going to be like, okay, let's do the letter, the symbol. Well, this is crazy. Most people want to run away, right? We just want to run away and go back to what we know. But what we know is typically not true and very harmful because it's been fed to us by the system. So we have to go outside of that system and really start to evolve to a place of consciousness that feels good. And when we start to change our diet, we start to, yeah, we change our friends because we're changing our energetic frequency. If we're in a state of anger, sadness, or fear, we're going to have the lower vibration foods. We're going to crave that. We're going to crave alcohol every day. We're going to crave uh, fried food, box foods, crap foods, you know, animal proteins. Give me some more dairy. Take me back to the womb, you know, coming out, baby. So all these different things. We have to understand, like, there's emotional triggers to the physical needs. You know, that's in uh, physiological psychology research. So we're craving the things that we're working back to you know, an emotional level. So we have to work through these emotions. We have to see our emotions as an amazing system to manifest and create everything, you mm. know, and that's a whole nother talk of the emotion <laughs> system for manifestation, not the fear-based old running emotions where we're just a little spark, you know, it's supposed to be this huge fire of heart coherence and love and joy and gratitude, the highest frequencies that we could be at. And then the foods just click in. It's like, well, I don't want to have this, you know, uh, whatever that is over there, that doesn't look good to me. I want the nice green salad with the sprouts. That's the high frequency I'm at now. 
I don't want to just be lowered. You know, it's like, I'm so happy. Please punch me in the face. Like, no, you know, people do that when they're angry. They're like, I'm going to fight you and all that. So it goes hand in hand with the emotional system and the food. And then of course with the mind and then the spirit. So if we're trying to change, it changes what we're, what's on our fork, you know, what we're drinking. That's the energy coming into our body being funneled three to five times a day. And that is changing us, you know, or like this, if you put an ice cube in water, what happens? It's, it's forever changed. You know, it'll try to go back to that homo, homeostasis, but if we keep pumping ice in there, we're not going to be able to do it. So there's no Roundup tree. There's no chlorine tree. There's no fluoride tree. These things don't exist in nature. So we can literally have none of these things. And we're pretty much breathing in 70% of the air has Roundup in it. 90% of all water samples have Roundup in it. So we have to start cleaning the house very different than we did 10, 20 years ago because there's dust floating in, there's all fragments coming in. So we have to pretty much be cleaning every day. And that's just the food choices, you know, and that's a big one. So we'll, we choose to do now affects us tomorrow the next day the next day so if you don't want to be happy healthy and in a state of bliss joy manifesting creating and activating our soul's potential a lot of it does actually happen through the food that's a really important one but start slow you know don't start you know well, how come this professor speaking so fast i don't know you got it's all going to be for it's all going to be different but as you start to feel and taste food different you'll start to notice different things on the unconscious level and that unconscious level will start to trigger more changes and more you know sense of awe and curiosity like a child and we'll start to create more neural pathways we'll get a neurogenesis happening we're going to start to open up these new you know sensory gating parameters for food things that were down the road juicing bar didn't even see for the last two years you know it's like whoa there's juice in here there's an infrared sauna over there this is over there so it starts to change the way that we see the world and the world starts to pretty much change the way it sees us, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a, a super magical thing that happens, you know, and then we start to get to our state of complete balance and symbiosis mm -hmm. with Gaia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great way to round us up and no pun intended. <laughs> 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 but um yeah so you know i want to just uh, in closing i want to ask you one more question like a question about um you know people there's still like you said this dissonance so uh, this is something i think about a lot because you know that there's a solution in nature you know the plants have the answers and yet some people are still one and there there is a place a time and place for heroic you know medicine western medicine um, modern medicine, but what do you say for people who even for like just for basic things that are so clearly just food based, you know, it's just food can heal this or herbs and plants can heal this. Um, you know, what would you want people to, to hear if they can receive a vibration and a sound vibration from you? What would you want people to hear to have them open their minds to recognize that the, the you know, going to your doctor just because you have insurance and whatever other system based thing that feels convenient is not always the right answer yeah i mean if you want to look at the old medicine medicine chest it's it's like the amazon rainforest it's it's everything growing outside for you you know cannabis is about 29 million years old you know horsetail is about 50 million years old so all these different plants out there are millions and millions of years old you know, balance within the symbiotic compounds of Gaia and every single thing happening. They know exactly what they're doing. They're working with bacteria and fungus and mycelium and downloading internet channels of everything they need to do through epigenetic changes. So all you have to do is literally just put it in your mouth, you know, in most times. And all of that information and all that knowledge and wisdom and healing alkaloids are there. So start slow, you know, start the morning with a green smoothie. See how you feel. Just do that for five days. Get some coconut water or filtered water, put some kale in there, some bananas, try a bit of chlorella in there, maybe a bit of honey if you want, and blend that with some ice and see how that feels. And then you can add some adaptogens and moringa and start looking up adaptogens and just seeing where it all goes because there's so many different roads up the mountain. So let's see where this one takes you. And there's no, there's no destination to get to. Everything is process oriented. It's not outcome. I'm not happy when I get this or when I do this. It's process. It's finding inner joy while doing dishes, walking your garden, being so grateful for today, not saying, okay, when I retire, I'm going to be happy. When I do this, that's all outcome-based BS. So it's really enjoying the process of life and starting slow and really connecting with the plants, just walking outside, laying down in the grass if you feel stressed. Watch what that does to your stress. It'll be about 80% reduced 
because it drops all of your adrenaline and noradrenaline within half a second. It gives you a parasympathetic dominance of acetylcholine. Everything just shuts down and you're chilled out. Thank you, Gaia. You know my pain, you know? And here's a plant to take away, and here's a flower for you to take away, too. So literally, it's just connecting with nature, you know, in a big, big way, whatever that means to anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. I want to just, I'm, I'm sitting here taking in all of your, all of this wisdom. It's like a, I want to say fire hose, but it's more of a, it's a, it's a waterfall. It's a waterfall of mm. wisdom and it's beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing this with us. No Dr. problem. Ray. Thank you for having me. It's amazing. Yes. So I'm going to be sharing where people can find you in the show notes. And I just want to say thank you so much for the work you do, because what we know is that people who are, are really working on this level, the frequency of the plants and the old ancient wisdom and carrying this and holding this and sharing this and at the, you know, if you even tuning into this after you're going to be listening to this, this, um, this podcast and you're going to hear, you're going to hear, you might not catch all of it. You might not have caught all of what you just heard, but it's still going in and there's still like your, your brain and your mind and your body and your, your whole being is encoding what, what Dr. Greg just just shared and waterfalled into you. So just know that, and then you can pull out the wisdom nuggets that you want to go and research further and act and act on, and act on because it's all about catalyzing. This is about catalyzing the transformation we need to live in the world that we really want to see. And it's it, this this it's this kind of wisdom that we really need to embody and act on and uh, be curious about if we really. Um, you know, it's, it's not just this dream about this future that we're going to save and we're going to have technology is going to save us, save climate change. No, no, no. This is all of our responsibilities and it starts with our food. Yes, definitely. Beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Dr. Greg. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Catalyst Talks. Stay tuned for what's up next and please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. You'll find the links below at catalysttalks.com and join us to continue the conversation on social media. If you'd like to reach out to me, Stephanie, please send a private message through Facebook and you can find that link at catalysttalks.com. Your attention here means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.